Hello, I'm Bob Gardner, Commissioner of the Indiana High School Athletic Association, and I'd like to tell you about a friend to the over 160,000 student athletes in the state of Indiana, Farm Bureau Insurance. Farm Bureau Insurance has contributed over $3 million in the past 10 years to the success of the programs for the student athletes of Indiana. You might not know that Farm Bureau Insurance is the exclusive corporate sponsor of the IHSA, but you would definitely know it if they weren't. We'd like to thank Farm Bureau Insurance for their support of all of our student athletes and their programs. For Market Square Arena, it's Championship Saturday. Four state titles will be earned today in the 24th Annual Indiana Girls High School Basketball State Championships. The Indiana High School Athletic Association presents the 1999 Girls Basketball State Championships. Brought to you by New Region Corn Insecticide and the One Pass System. From now on, this is how it's done. And by Balance Pre-Corn Herbicide, weeds don't get a second chance. For Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, the 1A championship game between the Gophers of Clinton Prairie and the Lady Mustangs of New Washington. The girls' high school basketball championships moved to Indianapolis in Market Square Arena in 1980, but this is the final year of the championships here in this building. Next year, they'll move down the street to the Conseco Fieldhouse, and we're happy to be with you to bring you the last day of girls' championship action here, along with Cinda Brown, the head coach at Rushville High School and the winningest coach in girls' basketball in the state. I'm Vince Welch. Thanks for being with us. Cinda, Clinton Prairie, and New Washington both making their first state finals appearance today. What an exciting day for both of them. Every coach's dream, every player's dream to play for the state championship. Let's look at the tournament trail for Clinton Prairie. How did the Gophers make it to Market Square Arena? Sectional victories over Rossville, Carroll, and Clinton Central. And then the large triumph over Tri-County in the regional. Park Tudor and Couts were the victims in the semi-state. For New Washington, sectional wins over Henryville, Lanesville, and Borden. West Washington was the victim in the regional, and then a very close contest with Rising Sun in the semi-state before finishing off Washington Catholic in the semi-state championship. We'll talk about great players throughout the course of the day for all eight teams participating in the state championship, including Courtney Menon of Clinton Prairie. Courtney Menon, third leading scorer in the state, what a player. She's the go-to player for Clinton Prairie. They definitely are going to have to have a big game from her today. Kirsty Holloway's numbers might not be as gaudy, but certainly an outstanding player who is the strength of this new Washington team. Has the height to take the ball inside. She can shoot the three. Averages 20-plus points a game. Another go-to player for New Washington. Clinton Prairie has won 18 in a row, looking for its first state title. What must the Gophers do to win it? First of all, Clinton Prairie knows that they have to box out. They can't give New Washington the second and third effort. Also, they must limit the number of threes that New Washington takes. And how about for New Washington? The first thing that the Lady Mustangs want to do is dictate the tempo of the game. And obviously, they want to make Courtney Menon pass the ball. If not, it could be a big game for Menon. The third member of our broadcast team today is Ron Sexton. He'll patrol the baseline and visit with the coaches. Thank you, Vince. One lady who knows the way to Market Square Arena is Connie Garrett. Your 28th season with the Lady Gophers. You've been here before, but for volleyball championships, and some of those ladies playing basketball now. Does that exude confidence in this game today? I don't think it gives us any points in the basketball court, but so far as the atmosphere and being used to this, I think it's helped a little bit. Best of luck against the Lady Mustangs. Thank you very much. Speaking of New Washington, your first trip of any kind in school history, Terry White. What does this mean to your team? Oh, this is, uh, this is the pinnacle, I think. Uh, I was telling the kids that this is my fifth year, and you know, you stand in practice and you talk about uh, when you're shooting free throws, you're shooting for state championships, you're doing this, you're doing that, and right now, this is the pinnacle of our career, more or less. Long trip, make the most of it. Thank you very much. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you. Thank Let's you. go back to Vincent Senda. The lineups for Market Square Arena are next for the 1A state championship game. For the introduction of players in this 1A state championship game, let's go cross court to the public address announcer at Market Square Arena, Mr. Scott Gregg. 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Market Square Arena in Indianapolis for the 24th Annual Indiana High School Athletic Association State Girls Basketball Finals. Our first game today is for the Class 1A State Championship and features the Clinton Prairie Gophers and the New Washington Mustangs. Here are your rosters and starting lineups for this morning's first game. First for Clinton Prairie. Number 11, Angela Ramsey. Number 12, Aaron Fox. Number 24, Carrie Burge. Number 31, Tara Snyder. Number 33, Allison Conklin. Number 41, Katie Siegfried. Number 43, Stacy Miller. And the starting lineup for the Gophers at one guard, a five foot eight inch sophomore, number 23, Ashley Menon. At the other guard, a five foot 10 inch senior, number 32, Courtney Menon. At one forward, a five foot eight inch senior, number 34, Amanda DeVore. At the other forward, a five foot nine inch junior, number 42, Heather Allen. And the center for the Gophers, a five foot 11 inch junior, number 44, Sarah Jacoby. The head coach of the 24 and two Gophers of Clinton Prairie, Connie Garrett. And now your roster and starting lineup for the New Washington Mustangs. Number 22, Amanda Bartmas. Number 30, Carmen Moots. Number 40, Bobby Harbin. Number 43, Sonia Wall. Number 44, Ashley Robertson. And the starting lineup for the Mustangs of New Washington. At one guard, a five foot two inch sophomore, number 10, Monica Tinsley. At the other guard, a five foot six inch senior, number 34, Emily Bauer. At one forward, a five foot seven inch junior, number 15, Melissa Harbin. In the other forward slot, a five foot 10 inch junior, number 33, Kirsty Holloway. And the center, a five foot seven inch junior, number 42, Amber Fellows. Head coach of the 22 and four Mustangs, Terry White. State championship action tips off when we return live to Market Square Arena. The starting lineup for the Gophers of Clinton Prairie, the forwards Allen and DeVore with Jacoby in the middle, Ashley Menon, and then the leading scorer Courtney Menon at the other guard. For New Washington, the Mustangs 22 and four, Harbin and Holloway at the forward slots with Amber Fellows in the middle and Monica Tinsley, an outstanding three-point shooter in the backcourt along with Emily Bauer. Clinton Prairie 24 and two with an 18 game winning streak. New Washington 22 and four with an 11 game winning streak. Clinton Prairie finished the season number two in the state, New Washington number six. Gary Hamilton and Terry Johnson wearing the whistles today for this Class A championship, and we are underway at Market Square Arena. A lot of good mid-court action right off the tip. A lot of action off that jump ball. People on their knees scrambling for the ball already. And you'll notice New Washington 
a colorful team with a lot of personality just by looking at the striped socks as Tinsley misses a game opening three. Washington in a man-to-man -man defense, putting a lot of pressure on the ball. Weak side help, good by Kirsty. First game jitters, I think. Here. Tinsley, the smallest player on the floor, just a 5-2 sophomore, got in there and got the rebound. Working it around, and we're going to have a turnover. The Mustangs have got to chase it down to make sure an easy layup doesn't come out of it, and Emily Bauer does so. Good hustle there by Heather Allen. She almost stole that ball and uh, could have gone in for an easy layup. Good look at Terry White, the head coach, in his fifth season at New Washington. Relatively young to the coaching game here at the school, whereas Connie Garrett on the other side has been around 28 years at Clinton Prairie and, again, missed shots offensively, yet to have our first basket. We played just over a minute. And Cinda, we've seen some early turnovers here, and it's easy to understand the, the jitters playing for a state championship, and you've got to experience those in the early going. And I think probably the edge here goes to Clinton Prairie, having played at Market Square Arena. They haven't been able to capitalize on any shots yet, but they haven't had the turnovers that New Washington has. The ball was tied up, and it will be awarded to New Washington. Vince Welch along with Cinda Brown and Ron Sexton from Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. The first of four state championship games today in the 24th annual girls high school basketball state tournament. Emily Bauer gets New Washington on the board first with the rebound bucket. A little full court pressure here with uh, New Washington. Basically, a, a token press. Now, I spoke too soon about Clinton Prairie, and they have their first turnover. Heather Allen lets it slip through her hands. You mentioned that Clinton Prairie has been here before, but been here as a volleyball team. Right. Seven members of this basketball team are also on the volleyball squad at Clinton Prairie, which has won back-to-back -back state championships here at Market Square Arena. Nice defensive rebound that time by Heather Allen, but the full court pressure from uh, Kirsty Holloway forced another turnover. Clinton Prairie 0 for 5 to start this game from the field, and New Washington 1 of 4. So both teams adjusting to the atmosphere here at Market Square Arena in the early going. And as a coach, you just hope. There we go. Bauer with another basket, a three pointer. And she has all five points for New Washington. As a coach, sometimes you just, if we can just make that first basket, we'll be okay. But sometimes it takes a long time for that first basket to come. The inside move, and Clinton Prairie is on the board. Kurt Courtney Menon. The first time of many that we'll call her name out today. I'm sure. Another three-pointer. It's short, and the rebound pulled away by Heather Allen. You might be thinking, wow, New Washington has shot a lot of three-pointers here in the early going, but that is their style, and it has been throughout the course of the season. And that's what Clinton Prairie as one of their keys was to try to limit the number of threes. Watch the replay down inside on the break. Heather Allen taking the ball to the basket, and I think she decided, well, I don't think we have the numbers. Let's hold it up and bring it back out and set it up. Courtney Menon with the basketball. Averaged almost 28 points per game, and she's taking it to the hoop again. Fighting for the rebound, but it ended up on the baseline and out of bounds to New Washington. We'll see our first substitution of the game. Amanda Bartmus, a 5-2 senior guard, comes in. Averaging just under three points per game. The inter interesting thing, as opposed to the old format, you're only playing one day game today, so you basically got to go with your strong players. You don't have to worry about saving anything for that second game. That's a good point because that can change your approach to the game as a Absolutely. coach. Another steal by Heather Allen. Allen has been very active already on both ends, and there's a driving basket by Amanda DeVore. 
strong move to the basket by Amanda. Interesting story with DeVore. Coach Connie Garrett told her, if you don't start shooting more, you're not going to play. Said she's a great <laughs> shooter, but she wouldn't shoot the ball. So that's a player's dream to be told to shoot it more. <laughs> Knocked away and almost stolen. Good hustle from Ashley Minnie. And in this day and age, very seldom does a coach have to encourage a player to shoot more. Good rebound by Sarah Jacoby. Defensive block out. Inside pass, shot is short, but Heather Allen's got the rebound. She'll try it a third time, possibly, and converts. Clint Prairie's really getting two or three shots almost every time. And for the first time today, Clinton Prairie has a lead. Three on the way, in and out, no good from Tinsley. On the dribble drive, and again, it's Courtney Menon. Courtney's taking the ball to the basket every time. I think that uh, we've been hearing about her great three-point shooting, but she can also take the ball to the basket. Three more on the way, and this is off the back of the rim, and a, out of bounds to Clinton Prairie. Timeout on the floor. Clinton Prairie enjoying an early advantage over New Washington. Clinton Prairie has an early advantage over New Washington. Ron Sexton, what was Terry White talking about in that Mustangs huddle? He asked his team clearly, Vince, he said, how many second shots are we going to give the Lady Gophers? He wants his team to body up on the boards and also mentioned he's looking for an inside presence, although their storyline this year has been from outside the arc. He said they can't win the game shooting just threes. Clinton Prairie on an 8-0 run over the last two minutes and 48 seconds and a nice inside pass and a conversion by Sarah Jacoby. Now it's a 10-0 run. New Washington shot 154 three-pointers, excuse me, made 154 three-pointers. So you know that the Lady Mustangs can indeed shoot the three, but in a new building, particularly uh, a facility this large, it's sometimes difficult to get your shooting touch, and when you rely on the perimeter so heavily, it can be costly. I think that's true of any new facility when you're not used to playing in that facility. You know, when we played at Danville on the regional, uh, we... And there's a good three-pointer by a little Monica Tinsley that time. Nice shot. And we're just talking about their three-pointer. Now they're warmed up. Tinsley's first basket of the game, and that stops a 10-0 run for Clinton Prairie. Inside and a foul as Heather Allen was slapped on the arm, and Allen will go to the free throw line. Heather Allen has been very active today as you get a look at Emily Bauer. Yeah, there's certainly been a spark plug for him. Second foul on Bauer, also the second on the team. 42, Heather Allen at the free throw line with two shots. <laughs> Heather Allen, a three-year starter. <laughs> Substitution comes in for Clinton Prairie, Allison Conklin. Terry White will go to his bench as well with Melissa Harbin back into the lineup after starting the game. Clinton Prairie by three as you look at the numbers for Heather this season. Four points for Allen and it's a four point advantage for Clinton Prairie. Both teams have stayed in the man to man in the early going. Late stages of the first quarter, under 90 seconds left. Offensive rebound, the putback is short. Try it again, this time too strong. Third time is the charm, Amber Fellows with her first basket. Then I'll make Coach White a little bit happier, seeing his ladies get two or three offensive rebounds. Long shot off the mark, and there's Kirsty Holloway with the rebound. We haven't talked much about Holloway here in the first quarter, and I'm sure Terry White would like to see her more involved as this game progresses. Averages 20 points and almost 
12 rebounds a game. Interesting matchup defensively where Courtney Menon is uh, defending Kirsty and uh, doing a really good job of keeping her out of the ballgame right now. Another three pointer off the mark, knocked away and nearly saved. Good hustle by Amanda Bartness. But it will be Clinton Prairie basketball when you see the time remaining in the first quarter. Washington fans wanted to walk <laughs> Allison Coughlin, maybe dragging the toe of that pivot foot a bit. There's Allen again inside, and Heather Allen really making her presence felt with a half dozen. Monica looking at her coach for instructions. Here we have Christy with the ball. Final seconds. The first quarter comes to an end, and the main storyline for New Washington, its leading scorer, has not hit the score column so far. Clinton Prairie enjoys the lead. Second quarter action just ahead. Clinton Prairie by four over New Washington. Kirstie Holloway, the standout player for New Washington, yet to hit the score column. What a surprise. How do you get her more involved, Coach? I think the thing that the probably Coach was saying, hey, we need to get Kirstie involved in the offense. We're not going to take any shots until she's at least had two or three touches. No problem for Heather <laughs> Allen getting involved for Clinton Prairie. Yes. She now has eight, eight of the 16 for the Gophers. New Washington came out in the zone that time, but I'm not sure they'll say, well, there we go. What did I say? Right on cue, yeah. Kirsty Holloway, first basket. Courtney Menon, a nice inside pass, and there's Holloway again looking for some help. Jacoby is fouled, but they're going to call traveling first. We heard the slap from over here, but she shuffled the feet before the foul. And here comes Tara Snyder. Back or into the ball game for the first time for Clinton Prairie. Sometimes a starter. Connie Garrett will switch off between Snyder and Amanda DeVore, depending on the needs for the team that particular day. Holloway misses, but she has indeed become more aggressive right out of the gate here in the second period. Taking over handling the ball at the point. That gives her an opportunity to take one-on-one -on -one moves to the basket. There's a, there's a three-pointer by Courtney Menon. And with that three-pointer, Menon moves into eighth place on the all-time scoring list in Indiana girls high school basketball, passing former Richmond star Lisa Shepard. And now Penn State star. Yes. <laughs> Again, and it's short. Jacoby rebounds. So we've seen Holloway take three shots here in the second quarter, more than she took in the entire first period, and we only played a minute 45. Menon's shot is blocked. Heather Allen is fouled. If you're Connie Garrett, the coach at Clinton Prairie, you've got to be thrilled to death with what Heather Allen has brought to the game so far today. She's been so active, and it's really taken the pressure off of uh, Courtney and left her open to drive to the basket, take the three, and uh, that time she made a nice drive and the deflection almost ended up in an easy basket there. Courtney taking it, and Tara Snyder there, just a little bit hard off the glass. Substitutions for New Washington. Emily Bauer back in, and Ashley Robertson. There's a good look at Ashley getting her first action of the afternoon. And Ashley Menon returns for Clinton Prairie. Smith at the free throw line. An offensive rebound by Courtney. Puts it up strong and causes an, another foul by New Washington. And uh, Coach White is not happy. You've got to be careful with Clinton Prairie and putting 
the Gophers to the free throw line, a team that shoots 70% from the strike. I think of any improvement, excuse me, Vince, in uh, girls basketball is at the free throw line. Uh, 70 plus averages for a team is very good. Kirsty Kirsty Holloway picked up her second foul. So the Mustangs must be careful. So the coaches work in some substitutions. It's a 10-point lead for Clinton Prairie, the largest of the game. Holloway feeds the post, a nice give and go. Clinton Prairie stepped up the defense too and gone after that the three-point line. Good block that time by Sarah Jacoby. And Monica Tinsley all of a sudden there she's a six-footer in her face. That's where you want your player to pass it back outside. Well, when you're only five foot two, <laughs> your options are limited inside. Okay, Heather Allen played the defense. Emily Bauer is the relief. Five and a half minutes to play in the first half. Clinton Prairie by 10. Bauer's shot wouldn't go down, and Jacoby clears the rebound. Allen inside. Jacoby misses. Only one offensive re rebound that time, and uh, really didn't have clean control of the ball when she tried to put it up that time. New Washington shooting just 24% here in the early going. Five of 21 from the floor. And another turnover. Here's where Menon is so strong on the break. <laughs> Tara Snyder's had a couple of really Lesser close heart. looks at it, but just can't get it to roll in. She's shaking her head a little bit. But she'll be all right. Good help defense that time by Hel uh, Heather Allen. There's a screen move. Second basket for Kirstie Holloway. Holloway leads the team as we've got a foul. On the three-point shot as Menon was letting it fly, and Monica Tinsley whistled for the personal. Mustangs foul number 10, Monica Tinsley. It's talking about there momentarily about Kirstie Holloway leads her team in points, rebounds, assists, and steals. So New Washington has to have her today. And there you get a good look at the slap on the arm as Menon is shooting the three. She's saying, wait a minute, I'm only 5'2". I can't block her shot. Menon, an excellent free throw shooter. She'll play college ball at Indiana State. And with the success that Indiana State's had this year going to the NCAA, I'm sure they're real excited about having a player of the quality of Courtney coming in. Amanda Bartmus back into the ball game. So Carmen Moots is in for New Washington. And Stacy Miller returns for Clinton Prairie. Connie Garrett's got to be pleased. Her team with an 11-point lead after Menon hits all three free throws. Holloway trying to take over and misses the shot but gets her own rebound. From NBA range. From high school range, that would have been nothing but net. But from NBA range, it was a foot short. Do the lines confuse you? Because you do have, obviously, this is the home of the Pacers, and you have two sets of lines on the court. I can remember in 93 when my players took a three from the NBA, and I looked at her and smiled, and she goes, sorry, coach. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> New Washington with some full court pressure of the man-to-man -man variety, as you see the shooting percentages. Neither team lighting it up here in the early going. The Clinton Prairie's taking advantage of free throw opportunities, and that's been the difference so far. New Washington looking for some good shots. They've been few and far between, particularly here in the second period. Trying to get organized here. I think they noticed you know, Kirsty not in the uh, lineup, and they're 
Seem a little tentative now. Holloway getting her first breather of the morning. All knocked away, nearly a turnover. And now it is a turnover. And I can't believe that Terry White would leave Kirsty Holloway on the bench yeah. too long. And matter of fact, goes. here she comes yeah. back into the ball game. Terry White, 74 and 41 in his five seasons at New Washington. The Mustangs, members of the Southern Bruce Athletic Bruce Conference. Three minutes to play, first half. Clinton Prairie with an 11 point lead. Courtney Minnan with the cross court pass. And DeVore misses, and there's Holloway with the rebound. Bauer looked at the three, but again <laughs> outside the NBA line. Holloway, good position inside. Around the rim and out, scramble underneath. Clinton Prairie now has the numbers. Nice new look, no look pass there by Courtney Minning. Not a finish. And a whistle and a foul underneath against Clinton Prairie. Tara Snyder will get the personal. That will be his first. And the first on the team. How about that? Clinton Prairie goes to the 222 mark of the first half without a personal foul. The Gophers on top. Just lead of the game, 11 points. Ron Sexton, I'm guessing Connie Garrett is happy. Clinton Perry feels like this is a very pivotal point in the game, Vince, the last couple of minutes. They want to apply pressure and see if they can break this open here just a bit, so look for some pressure to take place. Also, a lot of talk about when to double team the post. Kirsty Holloway has given them problems at times. It's a great point, Cinda, because the last two minutes of the, the half and the first two minutes of the second half, always so important as Holloway spins, and that's the second shot in a row that's gone way down in and out, and then Amanda Bartness comes in and knocks the ball away, so the Mustangs get a bit of a break. Nice hustle that time by um, Amanda, and setting up the uh, three-point basket for Kirstie, passes off to Emily, and Emily's going to drive. See if they're patient here and try to get, you know, get the ball to Kirstie again. Good ball movement by New Washington. Trying to make a little run of their own here before the end of the half. Holloway, it's going to be very difficult for her to get much inside because Clinton Prairie will put two or three players. You see, look at, at one point there, are four players surrounding Holloway. You almost have to bring her out on the floor and give her the ball, don't you? That's about the only time she's been able to really have a good uh, opportunity to take the ball to the basket. The Mustangs have missed their last four shots inside of 90 seconds to play first half. Bauer with the rebound. There's Holloway coming out to get it on the floor. She loves that spin move and now she's fouled. Heather Allen called for the personal. I think Clinton Prairie's done a, a good job of forcing her out probably a little bit further on the floor, making that move, because you notice that Christie's been short on most every shot that she's taken off that spin move. It's a strong move. It's a play that you really like to have your 5'10 player be able to take. Now she needs to capitalize on those free throws. Holloway, an excellent shooter at the line, 82% on the season. Nice touch. Tinsley back into the ball game for New Washington. Courtney Minnan returns for Clinton Prairie. And it's no secret as Christy Holloway goes, so go the Mustangs. And right now it's been tough going here in the first half for both parties. Holloway does have six, but it's a nine point deficit. Holloway scored all of New Washington's points here in the second quarter. No, oh, nice pass. Courtney Minnan has 14. Clinton Prairie having 
too easy of a time on those interior passes to please new Washington coach Terry White. Another shot off the mark from the Lady Mustangs. And in the final 20 seconds, Menon now running the floor. Allen slices and scores. Captain Prairie just scoring at will almost right now. The largest lead of the game, 13 points, the final seconds of the first half. There was a foul underneath, so we will shoot two before the first half officially comes to an end as Connie Garrett gives instructions to Heather Allen. And stepping to the free throw line for a pair will be Emily Bauer. You saw the foul there. Watch it here on the rebound. Got her own rebound, put it up strong again. It's kind of aggressive play that New Washington needs right now, but also need to convert on those free throws. And New Washington just 53% from the line as a team, and that can be costly at tournament time. No. Bauer misses both. The first half comes to an end. Clinton Prairie leads. Ron Sexton will visit with head coach Connie Garrett. Our defensive intensity right there at the end. We've got to maintain better defense and keep looking for each other on the offense. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Connie Garrett of Clinton Prairie. Halftime at Market Square Arena in the 1A championship game. Clinton Prairie leads New Washington. It's been a good first half for the Gophers, leading the Lady Mustangs of New Washington 29-16 here at the intermission. Vince Welch along with Cinda Brown with the play-by-play, -play, and Ron Sexton is on the baseline with the publisher of Hoosier Basketball Magazine, Gary Donna. An abbreviated baseline bunch this year, Vince. Just Gary Donna from Hoosier Basketball Magazine. And Gary, before we talk about this first half, tender times throughout all of high school athletics, given what transpired last night at Columbus North High School with the passing of John Stewart of Lawrence North, the Wildcats. Well, you're absolutely right. I've probably attended 5,000 games in our 29 years of Hoosier Basketball Magazine, and I never witnessed or was at an occurrence like last night. It was the most tragic, uh, bizarre circumstance, and it was something that's beyond any of us, not explainable. Um, you know, just something that, that happened that anybody there won't ever forget. And uh, just one of those unfortunate things. And life goes on, and Bloomington South won the ball game, and they're an excellent team. But it's just a, it's just a tragedy. That's the only word you could use. Thoughts and prayers obviously remain with his family. This event here today happens to be the last of its kind at Market Square Arena. Well, that's true. And, you know, you kind of – I remember when the Indianapolis Indians moved from um, – 16th Street Bush Stadium to Victory Field. I kind of, I'd grown up going to that field and I hated to see it go and I was a little bitter about it. But then when I saw the new facility, you can't argue. And I've talked to enough people about the new Conseco Field House, but it's probably going to be the same way. I mean, I hate to see this place go. It's like, seems good enough to me. Had a lot of great games here, but like I said, the, the new, the, these new facilities are so magnificent that you really can't argue with them. Your impressions of this first half, close throughout the first quarter, but Clinton Perry seemed to open things up, getting easy buckets in the second quarter. Well, I think Clinton Perry's a little bigger, maybe a little stronger, maybe a little better. Uh, Courtney Menon has expected has performed well. I think the difference in the game is two things. One, uh, Kirstie Holloway really hasn't performed to the level she's accustomed for New Washington. And two, Heather Allen has been a big presence for uh, Clinton Perry. And with with Menon playing her usual game and Allen playing so well, uh, that's a little too much for New Washington to cope with right now. 13-point uh, lead, it's going to be very difficult for New Washington to get back in it. Might be some misconception now that class basketball is in place that it has some influence on individual ability, but Courtney Menon, although she plays in Class A, is going to wear Indiana State next year? Yeah, she's a Division I player. She came in as a freshman, well-heralded, uh, and I think she's pretty much lived up to it. One of the state's leading scorer, Division I signee, and she can physically play with most anybody. Uh, she's thrown some good passes. Uh, she can hit the three. She can play inside. She can play outside. And uh, Heather Allen has complimented her well. So those two right now are the story of this ball game. We'll have three more games coming up here today. One interesting storyline I found, the Fort Wayne story. Lures and Snyder exchanging losses. They're only defeats of the season and yet in different classifications. Well, that's true. They were both very good games. And 
Uh, Snyder's the more athletic, the more veteran of the two teams. Lures is a little younger team, but very talented. Uh, Rachel King, their sophomore, is somebody the viewers should look for because she's really a fine player. Uh, interesting that they're both here, that this one city has two teams represented. That's that's a little bit unusual. And uh, there's going to be a lot of good games today. Cathedral Northwood's going to be a real glamour game. I think there's a lot of excellent players in that one. And, of course, Everybody wants to know, can Fort Wayne Snyder slow down, slow up, some way stop or at least control or do something with Kenitra Johnson? Still scoring. She had 47 points last week. The only two undefeated teams here today, Indianapolis Cathedral and New Albany High School. Of course, uh, New Albany in Class 4A, Cathedral in Class 3A. Those games coming up. Let's toss it back to Vince Welsh sideline. Thank you very much, Ron. And uh, along with Cinda Brown, Courtney Menon has been the story so far for uh, Clinton Prairie with 14 points. But I really like what Heather Allen has brought to the table uh, for Connie Garrett's ball club. I'd say so far she's been the player of the game just with her uh, tenacious defense and aggressive play, taking the ball to the basket. And that's really what a team needs is someone other than their star to really step up. Kirsty uh, Kirsty uh, Holloway for New Washington needs to find a little more help in the locker room here at halftime. She has just six points and not getting much contribution from anyone else. Clinton Prairie on top of New Washington at halftime. Our first of four state championship games from Market Square Arena. Our halftime score for the Class A state championship game of the 24th Annual Girls High School Basketball State Tournament. Third quarter action just ahead. Let's take a look at those first half statistics and they will certainly favor Clinton Prairie after a very impressive first half from the Gophers. Certainly are. We see that uh, Clinton Prairie with the 37%, 89% free throw shooting. That's probably the key to the game right now. And from three-point range, the Mustangs rely so heavily on the three-pointer, but just two of ten from beyond the arc. And that's what you always said, you live by the three and you die by the three. The shooting numbers obviously indicate a tough day for the Mustangs. 21% from the field, 20% from three-point range, and just 50% from the line. And Turnovers, well, five turnovers apiece, but Clinton Prairie has six assists to their five turnovers, whereas New Washington has just two assists. And points in the paint, I think that's really important for Clinton Prairie. They have uh, 16 other points in the, in the paint, and those are your high percentage shots. Heather Allen has been one of the stars for the Gophers of Clinton Prairie. 11 points and seven rebounds in the first half. Ron Sexton is with Terry White. Thank you, Vince. Coach White, the key to the second half now. Well, I think we're going to have to obviously pick up our defensive pressure. We've not done much from an intensity standpoint. I've been real disappointed with our kids because of the fact that we just kind of stood around both offensively and defensively. And we felt like defense, we had to dictate some tempo, and we haven't done that. Best of luck to the Mustangs. Thank you very much. Vince and Cinda? Third quarter action just around the corner from Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. You see the score, third quarter action getting ready to begin at Market Square Arena. The first of four state championship games today. Clinton Prairie has dominated the first half and Courtney Menon has been one of the reasons why. 14 points, leading all scores through the first two quarters. New Washington has depended very heavily on the outside shot. This is one of the rare inside buckets. See the mad scramble underneath. But those inside looks have been few and far between, and Kirsty Holloway, with just six points, really needs to literally put this team on her back and, and carry it here in the second half. And I'm sure that's what Coach White said. Hey, you know, we've worked so hard all season long. We're not going to quit now. They're going to come back and be aggressive defensively and get back into this ball game. You've seen some of the inside shots there from Clinton Prairie. They've had a lot of good looks at the inside and there Courtney Menon draining the three pointer. So Menon living up to her billing, the third leading score in the state averaging just under 28 per game. But New Washington must answer the call here in the third quarter with the ball to open the period. The original starters on the court for New Washington. Tinsley and uh, Bauer in the backcourt with Harbin and Holloway at the forwards and Amber Fellows at center. And one of the things I think New Washington is doing a really good job right here is they're being patient. Even though you're down, you can't try to get it all back at once. Scramble for the ball, and it's tied up. 
possession arrow goes to Clinton Prairie. So it gives us an opportunity to reset the Gophers lineup as you look at the leading scorers in this ball game. Courtney Menon and Ashley Menon at the guards, and there's another turnover with Heather Allen and Amanda DeVore at the forward slots and Sarah Jacoby at center, and there's Connie Garrett in her 28th season at Clinton Prairie, also the volleyball coach, and she said there's a little bit of pressure to win the state championship in basketball. They've won the state championship in volleyball the past two seasons, and she's trying to impress on those in the community. It's a different sport. Yes, we have a lot of the same players, but the sport is different, so she's going to try to satisfy the fans today as Tinsley knocks down a very important three-pointer. Three-point basket, Monica Tinsley. Tinsley's second three of the day. Her 60th of the season, and there's Menon with the rebound. Another second chance opportunity. Finally, New Washington gets on the boards, and there's a whistle on a foul. Clinton Prairie fans not real happy with that call. It looked like two people going after a loose ball and uh, fighting for the rebound, actually. Sometimes the defensive person gets called there. First foul of the second half. Third foul on Heather Allen, however. So Allen in some foul trouble, and Connie Garrett's going to have to go to the bench in all likelihood and protect one of her outstanding players. And what a difference Allen was in the first half with 11 points and seven rebounds. Here's Holloway on that spin move. Well, strong to that time. That's some uh, intensity. That's the first emotion you've really seen out of Kirstie after she made that bucket. And just as New Washington scored the first five points of the first half, the Lady Mustangs have scored the first five points of the second half. Exactly what they needed to do to get back into this ball game. Menon with an offensive rebound. Needs some help. Knocked away, and now Jacoby to the rescue. Lady Mustangs of New Washington really sagging in to protect the pain, and the Menon shot as a three-pointer, but it's well short. Connie Garrett upset, Menon was knocked down, and Garrett wanted the foul, but didn't get it. Heather Allen leaves the ball game with Good those three out. fouls, yeah. and Allison Conklin will come in, and we'll get a 20-second timeout. It's a 20-second timeout, a 20-second timeout. What's Connie Garrett going to stress to her team in this huddle? Well, I think the, the most important thing that you're going to tell the players is, number one, okay, remember how important these first few minutes are. We've let New Washington back into this ball game. Let's don't go away from our game. Let's get the ball where it needs to go. And Heather Allen with three fouls might change that a little bit. Especially if they, if they leave her out very long. She's just been the defensive catalyst for them all during the first half. And Terry White's got to be pleased with his team's play here coming out of the locker room. See a little spark in their face now. A little bit more aggressive uh, defensively, and that's what they're going to have to do. I'm guessing Terry probably had a little spark in his halftime speech <laughs> as well. 5.35 to play in the third quarter, just underway, second half. New Washington trailed by as many as 13 in the first half. In fact, down 13 at, at the half. Making a run here in the third quarter, and a whistle and a foul underneath. Sonia Wall will go to the free throw line. That was a good offensive rebound by Isanya there when she missed that shot. Went back up strong, and the, she gives uh, New Washington some uh, size inside. A freshman and probably scared to death, but doing a good job for New Washington right now. Two shots. Two shots for Wall. And New Washington has scored the first six points of the third quarter. You see, Tanya's not been enough line much at all this season, but she rattles them both home. Nice when you get a player off the bench that contributes right away. And now New Washington with some full court pressure. Clinton Prairie handles it nicely. Definitely picked up their intensity on defense. With Heather Allen on the bench with three fouls, we look for Courtney Menon to become a little more aggressively offense on the offensive end. Kobe is fouled underneath. 
Kirstie Holloway is going to pick up the personal. On Holloway, that will be her third. Ball the baseline, and I'm sure Kirstie would really like to take that little slap back because all she had to do was just be standing there with her feet on the ground, and she'd have pretty good defensive pressure. Okay, just a little bit of body contact there underneath, and that's a very important foul because Holloway with three is going to have to come out of the game. Blocked shot by Wall, but evidently some contact as Ashley Minnan was driving into the basket. So Ashley will go to the free throw line. She says, well, I'll take it right to them and let's see if they come with contact again. It's the first really strong offensive move we've seen by Ashley. And we can see that Minnan uh, drive to the basket. And I'm sure she's uh, probably going to pick up in the footsteps of her sister. Connie Garrett talked about Ashley Minnan when I visited with her this week. And she's not the same caliber player as Courtney, but she's done a really nice job not being overshadowed by the shadow. She stays within her role and is a real contributor as we see a substitution, Ashley Robertson in for New Washington. And sometimes that's difficult for a younger sister to do. Very difficult. Ashley connects on both free throws and the lead back to eight for Clinton Prairie. First points of the game for Ashley Minnan. Tinsley misses, battle underneath, and there's Ashley Millen going to be called for the foul. Emily Bowler's not that big, but she's really been a, a, a force inside, taking the ball to the basket, and then offensive rebounds. First foul Monica, on Minnan. Right, Monica misses the shot, and Emily just timed her jump there. And got the slap by Ashley. Tara Snyder in for Clinton Prairie. Clinton Prairie has not lost a game since December 17th. A lot of wins between then and now. In fact, the only losses this season for Clinton Prairie on that 24 and 2 mark were to larger schools, 3A schools, Bitten Central, one of the perennial powers in the state, and regional champion Westfield. So nothing to be ashamed about with those two setbacks. Inside pass and Jacoby finishes. Exactly what Coach Garrett wanted him to do. Get that ball inside. Cut that run that New Washington made. Second basket for Sarah Jacoby, a three-year starter. Her dad's one of the assistant coaches on the team, so makes the staff a little happier there as she finished the nice assist. Tangled up and a foul. Nice. Robertson was dribbling the baseline. Personal foul Third called on Snyder. Snyder for second. James Moore. Here we can see that uh, Ashley's taking the ball to the basket very strong. Gets tripped a little bit. That's one of those excuse me fouls. But Kirsty Holloway has come back into the game for New Washington. Remember, she has three fouls, so she can ill afford a fourth. And Bauer with the nice move. And well, he's made that move all day, and finally this time she gets the basket to drop. Seven points for Bauer. She scored the first five of the game and had not scored since. Clinton Prairie with the basketball and an eight-point lead. The Gophers led by 13 at the half. New Washington's only lead of this game was a 5-0 advantage, but Clinton Prairie responded with 10 straight points and has not trailed since. Washington playing a sort of a 1-2-2 two, two zone and it slowed Clinton Prairie down just a little bit. And does that protect Holloway with those three fouls a little more also? I'm sure that's one of the reasons he's gone to that. Baseline shot off the mark and a rebound foul. We've got a push underneath and Allison Cochran of Clinton Prairie will be tabbed for the personal and that will be her first and the fifth team foul. At the small schools like Clinton Prairie and New Washington, a lot of three sport athletes and there are several on both of these teams. The volleyball-basketball combination is always a popular one, but softball and track part of the arsenal as well as Holloway makes a strong move. Soccer is becoming one of the players that, uh, or one of the sports that uh, 
basketball players are taking up too. Oh, what a nice steal there by Kirsty Holloway. And oh, nice pass. Great pass, and Bauer finishes. It's a four point game. New Washington with a nice run here in the third quarter. A 13 to 4 advantage for New Washington in the third, and we've got a tight one here at Market Square Arena. New Washington with a nice run here to open the third quarter, and Kirstie Holloway has been one of the reasons why. She gets a nice deflection, turns it into a steal, and then a great assist. I'm sure that Coach White was holding his breath that that wasn't going to be her fourth foul. Speaking of Coach White, Ron Sexton, I've got to believe he's much happier with his team's play here in the second half. Well, we'll see if we can get Ron back. Ron, are you there? Yeah, Coach White expects a little run from the Lady Gophers right now. On defense, he wants to gamble, make smart gambling decisions, though, because he's very proud with what they managed to accomplish here so far to start the second half. You see the run 13 to 4 here in the quarter on good shooting from New Washington. And it was a nice rebound from Sonia Wall. You see Heather Allen's back in the ballgame now, too. Clinton Prairie struggling one of eight from the floor here in the corner. And there is Holloway again. This time a three-pointer, and she has 13. 60% shooting for New Washington here in the third. It's a one-point game. Answered by Courtney Menon. That's what your stars are supposed to do. Absolutely. Back-to-back -back threes, one from the leading scorer of New Washington, and then an answer from Courtney Menon, the leading scorer for Clinton Prairie. Courtney now with 17. Ball knocked away and a foul. New Washington will go to the free throw line. Whatever Terry, Wa Terry White told his club in the locker room, it worked because it looks like a completely different team for New Washington here in the third quarter. Shots. Melissa Harbin, the 5'7 junior. And when New Washington makes a free throw, Terry White must breathe a sigh of relief. His team just 53% from the line on the season. First two points for Harbin, and it's a two-point game. Approaching the final minute. Inside shot of Holloway as another rebound. Holloway has become so active here in the third quarter on both the offensive end and also the defensive end with the rebounding. I'm sure this is the type of play we've seen from her all during the tournament all season long. And Heather Allen with the rebound. And fouled. Allen back in playing with three fouls. Is knocked to the floor. Indicate who picked up the personal. It's a Melissa Harbin. First foul on Harbin. Take a look at it. Heather got just really great defensive position there. And uh, it was another one of those accidental trip me fouls. 40 seconds remaining, first half. What was a 13 point game at the intermission has tightened up. It is now a two point contest, and Clinton Prairie will keep the basketball. Connie Garrett having to work a lot harder in the third quarter. You know that feeling, don't you, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. Not the kind of situation you want when you've had a comfortable lead all through the first half. And then, like we said, those first few minutes of the third quarter are so important. And three-pointer by Courtney. Real strong. Can't give men in that shot. Fortunate that she missed it. And now we've got a whistle and traveling violation called on Ashley Menon.
Kirstie Holloway had gone out of the game for the purpose of avoiding that fourth foul. But now that New Washington gets it back, gets the basketball back, they'll put her, they'll put uh, Christy, Kirstie back into the game and give her a chance to score one last basket here before the end of the third. Bauer on the dribble, and Allen trips her up. That will be her fourth. You see offensive defensive strategies going here. I'm sure Kirsty's going to come back out of the game with the six seconds left, so she will pick up her fourth foul. Ashley Robertson in for Kirsty Holloway. Allison Conklin in for Clinton Prairie as Emily Bauer steps to a free throw line. What a great comeback for New Washington. Here in the third quarter after trailing by 13 at the half. The final seconds. Menon's got to hurry. We've got a ball game at Market Square Arena. Eight minutes left to determine the state championship in Class A. Kirsty Holloway, very active in the third quarter. She had seven points and now has 13 for the game. Kirsty's just been the difference in that third quarter, you know. I'm sure that she was probably upset with her play in the first half. Not that she played poorly, she just didn't do what she'd been doing all season long. And New Washington's done a very good job of getting her back into the flow of the game. Holloway averages 20 points and 11 and a half rebounds per contest. The shooting numbers here in the third quarter at the difference as New Washington pulled itself back into this ball game as we now venture into the fourth and final period. Clinton Prairie will try to re-establish the tone here, but it's New Washington's Holloway giving the Lady Mustangs their first lead of the game since it was five to nothing. Courtney went for the steal there and almost got it, but in doing so, let Kirsty have the uh, offensive move to the basket. New Washington jumped out to a 5-0 lead before Clinton Prairie ran off 10 straight to answer. But since then, it's been all Clinton Prairie, and all of a sudden now, the New Washington Lady Mustangs have charged back in front. Clinton Prairie's really been pulled. That was a really good look at the basket. It looked good all the way, but just down in and come back out. Sometimes it's better to have the momentum at the end compared <laughs> to the beginning. And that's what's playing out here. It was all New or all Clinton Prairie in the first half. It's been all New Washington in the second. Holloway has it, and Clinton Prairie now faces a three on two. Back to Holloway, but it's knocked out of bounds. Good hands from the Clinton Prairie defenders. Connie Garrett wants a timeout. Let's see if she takes the 20 or the full. It's a 20 second timeout for Connie Garrett. Did she see something out, here, out of the game here in the fourth quarter that has caused her to call a timeout so early in the period? I think one of the things she's probably telling them that fast break that they had, it, it really wasn't a true fast break. The defense was there. Uh, that's the opportunity where you want to slow it down, bring it back out, set up, get the ball in the hands of Courtney, get the ball in the hands of your score. Connie Garrett, her 28th season at Clinton Prairie, her 28th season, which she says she's not ready to retire yet. She's got some more coaching to do. Everybody always asks all of us old coaches, is this your last year? Is this your last year? I don't know if they're trying to get rid of us. or. They... And just set the record straight. It's it's not going to be your last year. Well, is it? We won't make any comment about that. <laughs> we'll break it here on the state championship coverage. You should go on the LPGA tour. Oh, that would be fun. I'm not sure they allow uh, hackers. <laughs> <laughs> Inside rebound, it's tied up. Possession arrow points to Clinton Prairie. It's probably a, a could be a change of the game right there, where Courtney tied that ball up and they got possession on the uh, jump ball, alternate possession rule. This is a big possession for Clinton Prairie. Courtney Menon 
has the pass knocked away, almost stolen. Now there's a scramble for it, and Wall came away with it. And now Ashley Menon will be whistled for the personal foul in the backcourt. And on Menon, that will be her second. The momentum has turned, and it's in possession by New Washington. Definitely, you can see the change in the uh, walk of the players. And Courtney makes a nice move, but a good hands on the ball by Emily Bauer, and Sarah Jacoby scrambles for the ball, but not able to control it. There's a little spark in the walk of New Washington, which we saw them sort of dragging at the end of the first half. Bauer gets to the free throw line most frequently among these Lady Mustangs. Got 11 points here this afternoon. Make it 12. It's a three-point advantage for New Washington. Heather Allen comes back in, but remember, Allen has four fouls. She was the difference in the first half with 11 points and seven rebounds, but has been ineffective here in the second half because of foul trouble. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Garrett says, well, now it's now or never. You know, she can truly play these last four minutes without a foul. Nice pass inside. And Sarah Jacoby converts the easy bucket. It's exactly what Clinton Curry needed at this point in the ballgame. Jacoby with four points. Gets Clinton Curry back to within one. The Washington trailed by 13 at the half, but dominated the third quarter. away and Courtney Menon comes up with it. Menon leads her team in just about every statistical category and she's had that kind of game here today as Wall has whistled for the foul underneath as Jacoby put it up. Jacoby's a very quiet player and Connie Garrett was saying sometimes they have to really prod her to get aggressive inside but she makes a good move here to the basket. Right. Courtney makes a nice pass and a nice drop step move by Sarah and uh, a little ball fake, and then going up with it, she might have a three-point play. At 5'11", Sarah Jacoby, good volleyball player. She's a middle hitter on the two-time defending state champion volleyball team. Here comes Amber Fellows back into the lineup. For New Washington. Jacoby trying to tie. Oh, nice. Dude. Turnover, and Menon is fouled this time. And she, Courtney Menon went to give the old pump of the <laughs> fist and almost caught the official, I and I think pulled her hand back and maybe poked herself in the eye. Yeah. She realized she was about to drop the official with a right <laughs> straight, and let's see if we can keep this to the very end of the replay, and we'll maybe get a look at how she almost caught the official here. Watch it, right? Oh, oh we didn't see it. Stopped a little bit too soon. But you tell that Terry's very concerned about her welfare, making sure that she's okay. She might, I believe, maybe the official actually caught her in the eye. I'm not sure, but Courtney is wiping her face, and uh, she's obviously okay and ready to go as she steps to the free throw line and takes instructions from Connie Garrett. Here you go. Watch the official catch her in the eye. Ooh, right there. Didn't bother at all. Menon probably could shoot him well with one eye. <laughs> Just eyes closed. We do that in practice all the time. Courtney Menon with 18. Make it 19. And that gives Clinton Prairie the lead back at 40 to 39. The seesaw game here in the second half. And it looks like this one going right to the wire. Just the way a state championship game should finish. Five minutes to play. Holloway, what a great matchup between these two stars. Not much room. Millen's a good defender. Tinsley's three-pointer is an air ball, and it's going to bounce out of bounds. Clinton Prairie basketball. Terry White not very happy with that shot. She's probably uh, wanting that one back, but Monica's hit that shot today, and uh, well, she's Clinton hit it all season. 63 pointers this season with the two she's hit this afternoon. It's hard to make an air ball look good. 
<laughs> Even with the best explanation. Menon. The new Washington fans, a little extra life here in the second half. We're going to have a timeout. The new Washington wants the timeout. New Washington to talk things over and with 426 to play in the ball game. It's a tight one and uh, Terry White's ball club has pulled itself right back in it. Made some nice adjustments in the second half. Now I'm sure Coach White is saying to his team right now, okay, you know, we really don't need the three-pointer right now. We need to be patient, run our offense, let's uh, make them make a defensive mistake and then take advantage of it. On the other side, Connie Garrett, she's got Heather Allen with four fouls, but Courtney Minnan has been terrific, although just 19 points, and you say, well, just 19, but she averages 28 a game, so maybe a little less than her uh, normal performance, but obviously the competition at its highest here in the state championship game. I had 14 in the first half, so uh, the second half has been a little bit different in the scoring for Of course, it's the first of four state championship games. Fort Wayne Lures and Austin will play in the 2A showdown. Lures 26 and one, Austin 19 and seven. Northwood and Indianapolis Cathedral in the 3A and Fort Wayne Snyder New Albany in the 4A game. Ron Sexton, what do you have for us? Connie Garrett telling her Lady Gophers deny the ball to Kirsty Holloway. Even if you have to leave your, your assignment for more for a moment, deny the basketball to her. She's been that effective here in the second half. That's a game plan for the Lady Gophers here with 4.26 left to play. Well, obviously, Connie Garrett believes that Holloway is the difference and the key to this new Washington team, which... No disrespect, but it doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. I was going to say, I think she's very accurate. In the Even I know that. Yeah. And, and we know you don't. And, well, and, yeah. Well, I guess you, you know, know I don't know anything about, about the game. <laughs> I just sit here to set you up. <laughs> right. The field goal numbers on the ball game. Both teams very even. Each team has made 13 baskets. And it's a very even score. A one-point game. Clinton Prairie on top. Approaching the four-minute mark. Tinsley looked at that three-pointer, but after the last one was an air ball, she thought otherwise. Probably had a little bit better look that time than she did the last time, but uh, those air balls do tend to make you stop and think a little bit. Oh, Inside nice. Inside pass. Oh. Got her own rebound. We've got to convert those at this stage of the game. The fellows couldn't get it. Knocked away. Last touched by Holloway. Clinton Prairie basketball. Three forty-two to play, a state championship on the line. The only real foul trouble for Clinton Prairie is Heather Allen. She has four. And her shot just tied up there, but the possession arrow, well, the possession arrow is pointing New Washington's way, so the Mustangs will get the basketball back. And Fellows will leave the ball game, and in comes Ashley Robertson. the dribble. Tinsley hanging around outside that three-point line and she's just a sophomore. She's not afraid to let it fly. We've seen that today. A rebound inside but there's a whistle oh. and a foul. Just the against Clinton Prairie. Right at the opposite of the first half. New Washington now is getting the second and third shot and I believe that's going to be the fifth foul on Heather Allen. Oh, Heather Allen fouls out of the ball game and she was a difference maker in the first half with 11 points and seven rebounds. But she did not score here in the second half. She finishes with 11 points and nine boards, but no points in the second half because of foul trouble. I think uh, Coach Garrett is, has a little look of astonishment on her face. That you're calling that foul on us? So Garrett goes to the bench, and she'll bring in Amanda DeVore. And again, as we mentioned about DeVore, an outstanding shooter. In fact, Connie Garrett wants her to look for her shot more aggressively. But with 3-11 to play, you want to make sure your shots count. And then you see Garrett still 
pleading with the officials. I don't think they're going to change their call now. <laughs> One thing you learned it no matter how much you plead, they don't usually change it. Try to get some help on the next one, maybe. Melissa Harbin has really struggled from the free throw line this season, but she knocked that one down. In fact, she's had a good day at the free throw line, two for two. And probably the one glaring weakness that it looked like New Washington had was been converting those free throws and they have jinxed them. But they have been making those free throws in the second half. Washington wanted the whistle, didn't get it. Tie game, 40 apiece. Courtney Menon to the basket. 21 for Menon. She may get that average anyway. 2.49 left. We might see a Menon and Holloway show here down the stretch, but a good pass nice. from Holloway. She sensed the defense was keying on her, and she gave it up. Sign of a good player. And again, Melissa Harbin will go to the free throw line. This might be one of those games that the free throws determine the outcome. Like a good block underneath. But Harbin will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Two shots. Two thirty-nine to play in the contest. New Washington fought back from a 13-point halftime deficit and led 39-36 in the early stages here in the fourth. But now three straight missed free throws proving costly. I'm sure that Clint Prairie's maybe gonna Spread the floor, get mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> so much for that game plan. Yeah, that's right. And it's know. Amanda DeVore, who Garrett told to shoot the ball. <laughs> and she's had a sigh of relief. She's smiling right now. Good steal by Ashley Newman. And then they threw it right back with Tinsley on the steal. Defense caused that. Three on the way, off the mark, air ball from Robertson. And here comes Courtney Menon. It's a four point Clinton Ferry lead. Clinton Prairie on an eight to one run the last four minutes to take the lead and maybe take control as Bennett hits. And Coach Garrett says, where was that all during the third quarter? <laughs> a 20 second timeout. Terry White with a 20 second timeout to stop the momentum of Clinton Prairie and all of a sudden, a 10 to one run for the Gophers. A lot of time though, minute 44 is forever at the end of the ball game. Washington doesn't need to play. Terry White giving instructions to his team. Not only do the Lady Mustangs need points at the offensive end, but they've got to make some stops defensively, whereas Connie Garrett's club really doesn't need points at this point. Right. They just need to control the ball, keep the ball in Courtney's hands, force New Washington to foul, go to foul line. Make those free throws. Free throws have been a problem for New Washington. This is the last three, just three of six from the line here in the fourth quarter. Ninety seconds left in the game. A state championship at stake, Clinton Prairie and New Washington. Tinsley being guarded by the taller Tara Snyder, which will Make it a little more difficult for the sophomore to shoot the three, but there's Holloway. That's who New Washington wants to have the basketball. Nice screen that time. Krista took to the basket. Missed it. Battle underneath. Good rebound from Ashley Menon, and it forced a foul. And if Clinton Prairie can step to the free throw line, well, this will be Renata yet in the bonus. So the Clinton Prairie Gophers will have the ball underneath their own bucket. Underneath the new Washington basket, excuse me. Sorry, right, it's a really a, a good foul because it uh, 
gave opportunity for New Washington to set up the press. No time going off the clock. Carmen Moots has come into the ball game for New Washington. We need to foul again right away with just a minute to go. We've got to stop Clinton Prairie's holding the ball. New Washington's going to have to foul. I know they don't want to foul Courtney, but they're, they're going to have to foul it. Now there they go. As Tinsley comes up to bump Ashley Minnan, but they let 20 seconds roll off the Long clock time. there. Long time. Ashley Minnan going to the free throw line, and her sister Courtney gave her a little advice there before Ashley stepped to the strike. She'll shoot the one and one. And we'll have a timeout first. Terry White wants to talk about it. It's a full timeout. 42 seconds left. It's all that separates Clinton Prairie from a possible state championship. After seeing a 13-point halftime lead evaporate, Clinton Prairie back in the driver's seat and Courtney Minnan, one of the main reasons why. Minnan with 23 points this afternoon. Timeouts obviously a key at this point in the ball game. 42 seconds left in the contest. Coaches want to use their timeouts to the fullest. And there you see the T.O. situation. Ashley Minnan, Courtney's younger sister, going to the free throw line. Courtney is a senior going to Indiana State, and Ashley just a sophomore. And now the young, young sister steps to the line for a couple of big ones. And Clinton Prairie, now 13 of 16 from the free throw line here this afternoon. Wasn't any hesitation on that free throw either. Ashley Minnan, just her third point, now fourth point of the game. New Washington's got to make something happen in a hurry. Bauer misses. Rebound pulled down. Scramble for it underneath. Still alive. Tied up. Possession arrow to Clinton Prairie. And with 30.8 left on the clock. New Washington's got to foul right away. They can't let any time go off the clock. As soon as it gets in bounds, they're going to have to foul. They don't really want to foul Minnan, but they've got to. No other choice. Well, it's going to be in her hands. And now there's a whistle traveling on Courtney Minnan. And that's where she probably just wanted to bring the ball back out and run some time off the clock. But being the unselfish player, she probably wanted to give opportunity for a teammate to score. New Washington with just one field goal here in the fourth quarter. And the three-pointer is short again from Tinsley. Over seven minutes without a basket for New Washington here in the final period. And the Clinton Prairie faithful comes to its feet as substitutions come into the game. They're going to be gopher starters and regulars a chance to receive a standing ovation as they are on the verge of winning their first state championship. Tears of joy to have that championship medal placed around the neck here this afternoon. And there's the whistle and a foul. 9.2 left. It's academic at this point. No sense in fouling, really, with just nine seconds left and an eight-point deficit. But Angela Ramsey probably doesn't mind. She gets to go to the free throw line with an opportunity to get her name in the scorebook. Make those free throws. Connie Garrett has been a long time, 28 years, as head coach at Clinton Prairie. She's going to celebrate her first state championship as Ramsey sinks the free throw. Of course, she won a state championship on this very court earlier in the, in the uh, academic year when her volleyball team won a second consecutive state title. Giving her starters big hugs over there. Once the game's over, sometimes you're so caught up in doing everything, you don't really get an opportunity to. Nice offensive rebound there by uh, Tony but it's not enough, and the celebration begins. 
Clinton Prairie. Its 19th consecutive victory earns the Gophers a state championship. A good conversation between Terry White, the head coach at New Washington, and Connie Garrett, the coach at Clinton Prairie. And she's just been presented with a state championship t-shirt and she'll visit with our Ron Sexton. Congratulations to the coach. Let's go to Ron. Connie Garrett, congratulations, your state champs in basketball this time. It doesn't feel like it yet. <laughs> we struggled in that second half. We really struggled. They took a lot of the way from us. And I still have to stop and think because I couldn't get the kids to respond sometimes. But in about five minutes, I think it's going to hit me that we really did it. You were up 15 in the first half. Did you give a warning at halftime like something we, to that magnitude could happen? Hey, we intended to come out and set the tempo. And instead, I mean, we got hurt with a couple calls. I don't understand a couple calls. I really don't. But we fought through that. But right in that span, there were a couple calls that really took us out of something we were doing, and then the kids got a little flustered also and wanted to complain. So I'll, I tell them I get to complain. They have to play. But we fought through that because that was, that was critical. When they came back and got the one-point lead, and all of a sudden we got more determined and settled down and played our game instead of going wild. You had a great year. How much of a chore was Kirsty Holloway for your team today? Uh, oh, she's a great player. The only thing we didn't reckon, I thought Courtney Menon did a good job on her, but I didn't think our help side recognized and let her go with the ball in the lane, and that wasn't supposed to happen. Courtney Menon and four other seniors, very special for your team. A strong performance from Courtney today. You're going to miss her. You don't replace her, but the others that have this experience, I think, are going to come back and work harder for different goals. Your 28th year coaching, how good is she? You've coached a lot of girls. Well, we can get her really working with everybody. She's as good as anybody I've ever had. We had an all-star in 81 that was awfully good too, and she's a completely different type of player, but she has it all. Well, congratulations, your state champions, and best of luck in the next step, the Tournament of Champions, the Class A state champions, Clinton Prairie. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations, Connie. Thank you. Connie Garrett mentioned her all-star back in 81, Mary Ann Smith, who was an outstanding player, and she's probably going to have another all-star this year with Courtney Menon, who had 23 points this afternoon. Clinton Prairie, our first state champion of the day. Clinton Prairie wins the state championship in its first ever appearance in the girls' final. 50-42 to 42 over the Lady Mustangs of New Washington with an outstanding game. Clinton Prairie led by 13 at the half, but uh, New Washington made a great comeback and challenged for the lead. In fact, it was a one-point game heading into the fourth quarter. 36-35 Clinton Prairie, but Cinda Brown, New Washington, just 2 of 14 from the floor in the fourth and final period in one of those baskets uh, really just at the end right, of the game, yeah. which uh, didn't matter. So uh, they went almost eight minutes without a basket uh, in that fourth and final period. And it's amazing that they only lost by eight points, and I think that shows the tenacity that they did. They really gave uh, uh, Clinton Prairie in the fourth quarter defensively, and I know that you see a lot of long faces, a lot of tears in their eyes right now, and having experienced that, being a state runner-up, I know that today it's pretty tough, but as the Years go by, they'll become uh, more and more proud of the fact that they were state runner-ups. Kirsty Holloway holding the runner-up trophy, and she had an outstanding game today, 15 points and nine rebounds. And Emily Bauer, her teammate with 12 points and five boards, the only two players in double figures for New Washington. And, and it, is a, it is a tough situation for the runner-up because you don't recognize the accomplishment of the season at this moment. Right. And I think, you know, the thing that they have to be most proud of is they could have died, you know, down 13 at halftime. They could come out and got bombed by, you know, 25, 30 points. But instead, they came back, actually took the lead and, and made an exciting ball game in the second half. We'll visit with Ron Sexton and new Washington coach Terry White here momentarily as 
Clinton Prairie steps to the podium to receive their championship medals. Ron? Terry White, terrific job of coaching. What did you say at halftime? You had a different team in the second half. Well, I don't know if I can say what I said at halftime necessarily. <laughs> we, uh, well, we were real concerned with the kids' uh, desire, and we, we really spent most of the time talking about their desire and what we had to do, we felt like, uh, to get back in this game. And I really challenged the kids as far as their heart was concerned, because I said, I know we're going to go against a very good ball club, and uh, we're down some points. And the kids came back, but we still didn't have enough gas there near the end. Uh, we got away from some of the things that we wanted to do. Uh, and then once we gotten down, then we had to kind of, I think, rush a few things that we normally wouldn't have had to rush. And I think that kind of puts in the hole. But this Clinton Prairie Club is a, is a very good ball club. And we spent, uh, you know, I've lost a lot of hours of sleep this past week trying to see what we could do to perhaps compete with them. And uh, they're deserving of what they're receiving. How about some quick praise for Holloway? Terrific performance. Yeah, uh, she's been our go-to person. Uh, and I told her, you know, especially, I think it was about the third quarter, that this is the type of game that, uh, you know, you got to come into and, and just step up big time for us. And I thought she met that challenge uh, pretty well for us. Because first half, there were some things that she was doing. I thought uh, we weren't doing a good job as a team. We were taking the ball away from her. I thought more than anything else. And I told our kids, I said, we've got to go with uh, what's been good for us. We got to bring the offense back around that side. And I thought the kids did, did a pretty good job of that in the second half. You had a great season. Uh, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, there'll be time to reflect on this. Right now, it's, it's kind of difficult to take because you put a lot of time into it. And you want to be that top one, but uh, the opportunity to be here, uh, you know, it is a, a lifetime experience. Coach, thank you much. Thank you very much. Ben Senda. It is tough for New Washington. Last year, the Mustangs lost in the championship game of the semi-state. They make it a step further this season, but fall short to Connie Garrett's club at Clinton Prairie. And a... Celebratory wave to the fans. It's been a long road for Connie Garrett, 28 years as head coach at Clinton Prairie, and she celebrates a state championship today. Well, and I think New Washington has to feel about good about their future, too. You know, they're a pretty young team, and uh, Emily Bauer, the only senior starter. And the game ball and championship trophy now being presented to Clinton Prairie. Courtney men in there to receive it, and what a terrific afternoon for the senior. 23 points and 10 rebounds. The Gophers of Clinton Prairie, state champions, 1999. Long after this building is no longer at its site, the young ladies will be able to come to Indianapolis and say there used to be a building here and in the last year of its existence we won a state championship. In fact for many of these girls won two state championships because right. seven members of this Clinton Prairie basketball team were also on the volleyball team which won the state title here earlier in the school year. Connie Garrett told me this week she's been fighting a cold and has had a bad cough throughout the week, and the girls have had a couple of weeks of sickness, but I'm guessing they're all feeling just fine <laughs> right now. Those little aches and pains are no longer being thought of right now. And that's a pretty happy coach right there. <laughs> no offense, but it's not often you see coaches with that wide a smile. That's right. <laughs> Final score, 50-42, to 42, Clinton Prairie is the winner. Let's join Scott Gregg now, the public address announcer for the announcement of the uh, Mental Attitude Award. In fact, Phil. A Mental Attitude Award is presented in each of the 20 IHSAA sports. This award is based on mental attitude, scholarship, leadership, and athletic ability. In addition to the award, Farm Bureau Insurance, the proud corporate partner of IHSAA, will award a $1,000 scholarship to the recipient's school. Before naming the winner of the Mental Attitude Award, I would like to invite the parents of the recipient to please come forward to share in this honor. The recipient of this award, while a student in grade 12, was nominated by the principal and coach, excelled in mental attitude, athletic abilities, scholarship, and leadership during the four years of high school, participated as a state finalist in this sport, and was selected by members of the IHSAA Executive Committee. I proudly name the 1999 Mental Attitude Award for Class A, Courtney Menon, Clinton Prairie. Icing on the cake for Courtney Menon, a state champion 
and a winner of the Mental Attitude Award. A day she'll never forget long after she goes to Indiana State and likely becomes a significant contributor to the Sycamores. She will always remember this day, the day she won the state championship and also took home the great honor of being named recipient of the Middle Attitude Award as the parents come down from the <laughs> stands and we'll have a visit with <laughs> Courtney here momentarily. Proud mama and papa and sister. Tough to keep those glasses on your face when the tears <laughs> yeah. are rolling down the cheeks. Proud parents indeed and her sister Ashley up on there yeah. as well. And there's coach <laughs> for the group picture. A well-deserved honor. Courtney Minnan, when she came to Clinton Prairie, the team had won just one game in her freshman year. That went to four wins. And then in her sophomore year, Clinton Prairie won 11 times. In Courtney's junior season, Clinton Prairie won 16. And now this season, 25 victories and a state championship. Courtney Menon, state champion and recipient of the Mental Attitude Award. Farm Bureau Insurance donating a scholarship money to Clinton Prairie High School and in the name of Courtney Menon. Ron Sexton will step up for a visit with the Mental Attitude Award winner. Ron? Courtney, congratulations. This is a very nice parting gift to go on top of a state championship. Uh, this is really exciting. I'm, I'm glad we were here, and I'm glad we won. What's the experience like for you? Has it settled in yet? Your coach said she hasn't realized that you're state champs yet. I haven't either. We've won, this is our third state championship, and all, none of them have sunk in yet. Maybe after, after, this, after basketball's over, maybe it'll sink in. Your coach talked about a different team, first half and second half, talking about the opponent you saw. They really turned up the pressure in the second half. Yet, a sign of a start, you seemed to match shot for shot. Oh, the second half, they put a lot of pressure on me, and uh, I just stepped up for the, for the challenge and just played good. How tough was the defensive assignment? Oh, gee, she's a great shooter. I had to chase her all over, the, all over and uh, I, just, I just stopped her, I guess. Nice way to go out. You'll play at Indiana State next year, correct? Yep. Excited about that? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Well, you're going out on the right note. Congratulations. Thanks. Courtney Menon. Thank you, Ron. Courtney Menon, 23 points, 10 rebounds, a state championship, and the mental attitude hardware to go along with it. Clinton Prairie cuts down the nets at Market Square Arena. Market Square Arena, the 24th annual Girls High School Basketball State Finals. March 13, 1999 will be a day that Clinton Prairie High School will never forget. The first state championship in girls high school basketball in the final 50 to 42 today. Clinton Prairie cuts down the nets. It's just the first of four state champions that will be crowned this afternoon. Fort Wayne, Bishop Lures, and Austin will square off in the 2A contest. Then we'll take a break and come back at 6.30 tonight for the 3A showdown between Northwood and undefeated Indianapolis Cathedral, followed by Fort Wayne Snyder in the 4A showdown taking on undefeated New Albany and maybe the Miss Basketball, uh, certainly one of the Miss Basketball <laughs> candidates in Kenitra Johnson. And, Coach, uh, you've seen Kenitra play. And, of course, what the, the great showdown last week at the semi-state with April McDivitt. This might be one of those years where we have co-miss basketballs, or at least you could have an argument for that. We've had the opportunity this year to play against both Connersville and New Albany, and uh, I think we lost to both of them by six points or something like that, and they're both outstanding players. I've watched uh, April since he was uh, middle school, uh, elementary, you know, the word was out on her long before she ever got to high school, and she's an outstanding player, and uh, time after time has brought her team uh, back into the game against New Albany, and then uh, when we played New Albany at the we actually played them during the blizzard up in Crown Point and uh, had a great time up there. And uh, again, Kenitra was one that uh, got her team back in the ball game. We were actually ahead uh, about 13 points in the first quarter. But that, as you can see from what happened today, those first half leads uh, mean nothing when it comes down to the nitty gritty. And uh, we saw that Kenitra do that time after time. 
when your team uh, needed the points, uh, just like we saw Courtney today, outstanding players always rise to the occasion. And, of course, you had an outstanding player as well in Elizabeth English, and it'll be interesting and fun to see the three of them on the all-star team together. What a combination that will be. The Ford, uh, the Ford play of the game, and uh, Courtney Menon certainly had a terrific contest today, and she finishes with 23 points and 10 rebounds. And she put her team in front with the go-ahead basket turned out to be, if you really want to look at it in a, of an official nature, even a game winner, and at 42 to 40, and Clinton Prairie never trailed the rest of the way with that hoop. Courtney Menon, the Mental Attitude Award winner as well, and the Ford play of the game. So she's taking home all the goodies this the afternoon. The thing that probably the most prestigious award that a player can get in any sport is the mental attitude, and it shows that not only is that person an athlete, but they're a student uh, they're a good role model. They uh, have represented their school well and uh, really, as you said, is the icing on the cake. We'll wrap up this first state championship game and begin getting you ready for game two this afternoon when we return to Market Square Arena where Clinton Prairie has captured the state championship of Class A. Clinton Prairie, an eight-point winner today in the first championship game, and Clinton Prairie fell behind five to nothing to start the ball game, and then the Gophers charged back to take a commanding lead, in fact, led by 13 at halftime. One of the main reasons, the outstanding play of Courtney Menon, and she got some help today as well. Amanda DeVore with a big basket there <laughs> down the stretch, made it a 44 to 40 game, and really gave Clinton Prairie some momentum, leading to its state championship celebration. Clinton Prairie won back-to-back -back volleyball state titles and now celebrates its first basketball state championship. And again, Courtney Menon, 23 points, 10 rebounds. The state championship trophy and the mental attitude trophy as well. Let's look at the game statistics uh, this evening. And New Washington certainly turned things around in the second half to make it uh, more respectable as far as statistics are concerned. And we'll look at those numbers now. Probably the biggest difference is the shooting that uh, New, pa New uh, Washington had in the second half. Their free throw shooting went up to 63%. Their three-point shooting, 24%. Think, well, that's not really very good, but it's a, it, anytime you shoot 33% in a game, that's almost as good as 50% at the two-point line. And I think that uh, is deceiving in the field goal shooting. They're 26%. Obviously, the fourth quarter was the killer, but the third quarter, I'm sure it was much higher than that. And that three-point number, four of 17, that is disappointing for New Washington because it's a team that really lived by the three-pointer this season. Like we talked about earlier in the game, that sometimes it's just a, a different arena, a different place, makes it difficult for that three-point shooting. And shooting a layup or inside the paint is just about the same wherever you are. But shooting the three-point, just the surroundings, the background, a lot of times is a lot different. And, uh, can throw the shooters off a little, especially when you've only had one practice about an hour and a half on the floor. Well, the final score here today, 50 to 42, Clinton Prairie, a winner over New Washington. Game one in the record books and the history books will now set the stage for game two when we return to Market Square Arena in Indianapolis.